My name is Randy Swallum. I'm a third generation sugar beet farmer from Windsor, Colorado. Uh, my grandparents were part of the uh, people that came from Germany to Russia to here and worked in the beet fields to start with and then uh, started uh, sharecropping with some of the landlords and then ended up eventually owning some land and, and farming that and raising sugar beets for the Great Western Sugar Company and now it's uh, Western Sugar. This is a field, it's 28 acres, this round field of sugar beets that it's planted. We planted them about uh, two weeks ago, which would have been about the first week in April. Uh, this is the spring of the year when we're doing our planting. Uh, the ground was prepared as far as preparation last fall, it was plowed. It's kind of semi-arid, this climate is a semi-arid climate, which, uh, but it also has irrigation. It has a bountiful supply of water. Beings were only about 20 miles away from the mountains, so we're one of the first uh, ditch systems that was developed for irrigation back at the turn of the century. Uh, the ground is pretty level, it's pretty flat. Uh, it has a clay, like I say, a clay base, which allows us to only have to irrigate these beets six to seven times a year, where some of the guys in the sandier soils have to irrigate 18 to 20. Uh, on the other hand, uh, when it gets time for planting or harvesting, if we have moisture abundance, then we have to wait until the soil dries where they can get in a little quicker. So it's, it's kind of a, a give and take. Today uh, I'm going to show you uh, how we plant the sugar beets uh, in this field here. Uh, how it's changed from the times in the early 1900s where they planted uh, seeds that uh, came in big burlap sacks to today where seeds are individually planted. Uh, some people still even plant uh, just one seed every 8 to 10 inches and don't even thin. So. Uh, and how when we get down this field will we'll look like this, what the operation was and uh, the implement that we used to get that where we're at today. See how Mother Nature through the freezing and the thawing process has turned this into a nice small fine particles of, of dirt where last fall we had claws probably the size of, uh, size of my fist to uh, keep it from blowing. So we leave the uh, clods up on top and then Mother Nature comes in there and uh, freezes them out so then by the springtime we have a nice uh, small particle firmed soil that we can plant the sugar beets in. The sugar beet seed is very, very small. And now we're going to go over to the farm shop and I'm going to show you how the planter operates and how what seed looks like. Today we're going to talk about the planting operation of the sugar beets. Uh, this is a six row planter that uh, we use to plant our sugar beets every year. Uh, I wanted to show you what sugar beet seed looks like. This is the actual seed. It's called monogerm seed, which means that we're only going to get one plant out of each seed. You can see that it's colored. The, plants, the seed is normally black, but in the ground, it's the same color as the ground, so that we, we dye it a red so that we can find it when we're trying to uh, find out the germination and see what kind of shape these seeds are in when we plant them. And these seeds fit in this seed cell. You can see how each hole, and they're, they're machined to the exact size. Uh, the sugar beet seed is sized. They're small, medium, large, and extra large. Uh, these are actual medium seeds. Oops, you can see how these seeds, well, only one seed will fit in each one of them cells. And it's gear driven by the disc here. There's a little gear on that disc so it turns at a constant speed. So as I turn the disc, it turns the wheel and that's what spaces my, my seeds out every three and a half inches. See how those seeds are coming out one at a time. And with this gear ratio, it's every three and a half inches. And that's how we space the sugar beet seed out so that it's not in a big group. This is a disc. And you can see this right here, this red thing, is what we call a depth bend. And that controls the depth as to how deep this disc is going in the ground. You can see I plant those beets about an inch and a half deep. Uh, they're very tender. Uh, it doesn't take much to keep them from coming out of the ground. Crust, uh, drought, too much water. So uh, 
uh, and also too deep. If I get them too deep, they'll never push up through the soil. So that's why this depth band controls my depth. And I also have an acre counter on there that counts the number of acres that I'm planting so that I know uh, if everything is working right. And it just has a little counter inside that as this turns, just like that, the numbers add up. And then it tells me how many acres I've planted. And that way I can keep track of the seed I'm using to make sure it's the right rate. And also how big the fields are for uh, uh, yield tabulations when I'm all done. So, but it just turns going down through the field and it counts numbers. These here are markers. They allow me, when I come back to plant, when I turn around and come back to the field, to plant exactly the, the right width from this row to the next row. We call that the guess row. If I wouldn't have these markers, they would vary, and then I would have problems. They could overlap or be wide where the weeds could grow up. So these are the markers that uh, mark the field. So when I come back to plant the next round, I have a mark to plant by. Now that we've seen how the planter works, uh, I'd like to take you out to the field and actually show you a planter planting sugar beets. Okay, this is my neighbor, Melvin Martin. He's uh, getting ready to plant. And you can just see how he's starting down through there. You see how the wheels are driving the uh, cells that put the seed in the ground. Planting is not a fast operation. It's very slow because you want it very precise. You can see how the seeds are planted in the ground. They're spaced out. And you can see that's why we color them. I told you how they color them so we can find them. If that was black, we'd have a hard time finding that seed. But you can see how one seed is placed about every seven and a half inches. I think the average family consumes about 100 pounds of sugar per year. And that comes from sugar beets and also sugar cane. Uh, if we don't take care of the farming operations today in the United States, we'd have to be dependent on foreign countries just like we are right now for oil. And we don't want that to happen. So that uh, it is important that, to remember that uh, most of the food and fiber that is consumed in the United States is homegrown. Uh, it's very safe. It's, uh, it's plentiful. And uh, like I say, we have to maintain our, the family farms and also the, the farming operations in the United States.